Felix here. We've got war in Iran and Israel. We've got the Bank of America giving us a pretty dire warning of what could, tra what could transpire today for three reasons. And I want to explain those to you so you are the best informed investor out there. As always, we'll also look at oil and commodities and how we can profit from this. The most important thing on days like this is always to go, could I have been better prepared? For example, could I have learned how to hedge? Could I know how to make money out of this by doing certain trades? And you, my friend, are the most important thing out there. You and your family's finances, all the noise, all the world nonsense, secondary. So place yourself first. And what I want to encourage you to do is come and join me tomorrow evening for a live trading training where I share with you what I learned as a former banker, how I make money, how I do that in three steps, how beginners can do it. I assume zero knowledge on this live trading training. So come and join me at felixfrenzerock slash webinar and you'll learn exactly how I do what I do and my team of bankers. First things first, the attack on Israel by Iran was advertised in advance by Iran. Now, generally speaking, when you're trying to hit somebody hard, you don't tell them when you're going to do it or where you're going to do it. So that makes me think Iran does not really want a full-blown war. They just felt the need to show that they have to do something. It's sort of like the, you know, the masculine thing. And Israel's also said that only military sites were targeted, which again sort of shows this is less of a, you know, less of a let's stir up things really up attack, but a little bit more specific. Now, the attacks largely failed, well, because they advertised it in advance. So the Israeli, American, French um, and, and, and other allied air forces, Jordan and Saudi, most interestingly, not publicly acknowledged, but there are lots of comments out there implying that, that the Saudis also shot down these drones and missiles together. And why is that? Because it's not in anybody's interest in the region to have a massive war. And Israel's response is, we shall strike back, but not right now. And again, that's calming things down. It's a smart thing to do. And the Israeli stock market, which just trades on Sundays, was actually up yesterday. Um, TESA is the index, or TA35 is the top 35 stocks index and you can look that up and it's actually green so to think that the rest of the world's therefore going to collapse on monday seems a little pessimistic and if you follow me on twitter you would have seen my comments on that yesterday so yes bitcoin took a big dump over the weekend but sort of recovering stocks thankfully didn't because the markets aren't open oil is sitting at 90 dollars which is high but it's not like it's not 100 you know what i mean and we know that saudi-led opec has a lot of supply capacity. They could supply more if they wanted to. They probably want to inch a little closer to 100 because it's very profitable for them, but not beyond because you go over 100, people will substitute away from oil-based products because the substitutes become viable. Plus, American shale oil drilling becomes profitable or more profitable, and therefore the U.S. actually stops importing as much. So there is this sweet spot, and we're pretty close to it. So I wouldn't think that oil is going to massively escalate unless something big happens. Now, what could be the big thing? And then I will also explain the stock market levels that really matter today. There's certain numbers that matter today. If we hit them, things will happen. I'm going to walk you through that. If Israel decides to finally take out or try to take out Iranian nuclear sites, which obviously they've wanted to do for a long time, this is sort of the, the opportunity where the rest of the world will kind of go, all right, fair enough. Would that lead to massive war? You know what? I don't think so. Because nobody in the Middle East actually wants Iran to have a nuclear bomb. The Saudis don't, all the Gulf nations don't, the Jordanians don't, Iraq certainly doesn't, Iraq, Iran, been enemies for a long time. Nobody actually wants that because, well, then they have to get the nuclear bomb and it doesn't really, you know, you, it's just, it makes Iran more powerful and nobody actually in the region wants that. So if Israel takes out or slows down the Iranian nuclear cap capabilities, I think the world would be like, okay, thank you very much. Maybe not publicly, but I think that's the way it would go. So again, that probably would then, you know, you get a few more missiles going somewhere and that kind of thing, but that necessarily doesn't actually trigger a massive war, in my opinion, because nobody really wants that. And the countries are fairly far apart, so they can just 
fire a few volleys back and forth and kind of leave it at that. And nobody actually ever acknowledges the true damage, right? Israel isn't like super, super open about what got damaged in Israel. Allegedly, some air bases did. And when you hit Iran, Iran's going to say, you hit a goat shed. I hope the goats are okay. I love goats. Goats are amazing, aren't they? They just look just like Winston, really. Um, now, the levels you need to watch out for the levels where the algo funds start to sell are the following. In the short term, it's 5092. That's quite specific, so write it down, 5092. Below that, stuff gets very, very, very volatile. But the more important level, which is a little bit more medium term, is 4819. That's the important one. So if we drop below 4819, you've got to put those hedges on. You've got to like do something, or you've just got to be prepared at the very least that it's going to go much lower and, and then maybe do some dip buying. So the other thing that works into that is that we've just entered the blackout period, which means companies are not permitted to buy their own shares because of earnings. And that's usually a big, big demand factor. And that therefore means if things go down, well, those companies are not in a position to buy their own stock cheaper, which they would usually do. And therefore, the market can fall a little bit more easily. So I'm feeling quite optimistic for today. I'm generally quite optimistic. I'm in a beautiful place. I'm traveling for like the, I don't know, the fifth time this year or something. And we're going to go somewhere really glorious in two days. So I'm very excited for that. And I'll share some of that with you. But ultimately, use this as a reminder. The world's noise will continue every year, every month, every week, every day. Turn off the news and focus on your own finances. Come and learn with me how we make money. Maybe it's something you want to do that you don't have to, but unless you like eliminate the option, you are not really making progress. So come and join me tomorrow, felixfriends.org slash webinar, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I love you watching. I love you for tuning in. I love your desire to want to learn. And I look forward to being live tomorrow at this time of the day if you're watching this as it comes out. And I wish you a glorious day. Take care, my friends. I think there are three stocks that could really, really blow up this year. Do you know what they are? And I said, I think I think I probably do. I think we've talked about this before. Shall we share it with people? I think we should. So I'm going to walk you here through Winston's research, which is the fundamentals, how they're doing, the actual trades we're doing on these stocks, and much, much more. The whole